Hey, what's up guys? So last week I posted a video sharing some of my frustrations with the radar detector industry. And you guys had a lot of really good comments as well, sharing your frustrations, your thoughts, uh, what you liked and what you didn't. And I wanna actually continue this discussion and uh, share a lot of what you had to share as well. Now, from a high level perspective, I think the biggest concern with the radar detector industry is not so much that things have peaked, maybe to some extent, which we'll touch on here in just a moment, but I feel like some of the basic core stuff is just not being met. When it comes to your key features that you advertise that need to be available here in a radar detector, a lot of companies are not really meeting the bar as far as like what I would consider to be the minimum level of acceptable capability and performance. Now, for some of these features, I don't think there's a good excuse for this stuff not being implemented. For other ones, I could see, hey, you know, the fact is it's easier said than done. A good example of that would be something like blind spot filtering, you know? You can take a look at companies like Escort and they seem to err on the side of being really quiet because a lot of people have complaints about detectors falsing too much. And for this reason, while well, there can be some performance related issues where it's not responding properly to a variety of different police radar guns because they're maybe being a little bit too overly aggressive on the filtering side. On the other side, you've got companies like Uniden, and they're gonna be alerting to a lot more signals to the point where people get annoyed about having too many alerts. And it's to the point that I actually sometimes see people reporting that they're getting tickets from their Uniden detectors because it's falsing so much that it gets to the point where it's the boy who cried wolf. Now, the Unidens do have some additional false alert filtering features, but it can be kind of complex to know how to configure all that stuff and how to get it set up. It's not gonna be the best in terms of just being super easy to use straight out of the box. And so finding that sweet spot here, finding a balance between having really good performance and really good filtering, that's actually really difficult to do. It's much easier said than done. And I gotta give credit here to the different radar detector companies for trying, even though they still haven't been able to like fully nail it. And so when it comes to building a radar detector, there's way more than just having a basic list of specs that you send over to some manufacturer and then have them build the thing. Now, what about the maturation of the radar detector industry? You know, there's a lot of industries where things have kind of just stabilized. Like at first you have a lot of innovation initially, but then the innovation kind of tapers off, whether it's with, I don't know, TVs or toasters or whatever else. There's not a ton of innovation because like they've kind of done all the core stuff they need to do. They don't need to add a bunch of crazy bells and whistles. And I suppose you could make a similar argument to radar detectors. I know Thea, for example, they were really trying to push the envelope here uh, with a radically different way of scanning for different signals to hopefully give us better filtering and whatnot. But again, that was years ago and none of us have heard an update here in quite a while. And if we take a look on the police radar gun side, as far as just the traditional continuous wave police radar guns, those actually haven't changed that much over the years. Now, some of the biggest changes that we've seen actually come from the non-police radar side and kind of your sources of false alerts that we're now having to filter out signals that weren't there years ago. So you've got, you know, your automatic door openers and your speed sign, of course. Those are pretty straightforward to filter out with GPS to some extent, depending on how well you design that algorithm. Uh, but one of the tougher things that a lot of companies are dealing with are the blind spot falses from a lot of different cars. And because those cars are driving around and moving, we can't fall back to a GPS-based filtering algorithm. We do need something a little bit more sophisticated and capable. Plus, blind spot radar operates a little bit differently. And because it needs to determine distance to like how far away cars are in your blind spot, uh, it's a modulated radar signal. So it actually looks a little bit different than what you see from like a traditional continuous wave police radar gun. But that said, some police are actually switching to modulated <laughs> radar as well. And this is the kind of stuff that you see in photo radar applications. So like when we talk about the multi-radar or GATSO or any of these different types of systems, it's basically a modulated radar gun connected to a camera and it's tracking the speed and distance of different vehicles. And if it sees somebody speeding, uh, it'll basically take a picture of the car and mail them a ticket. And because these types of radar are designed for really close range operation, they're lower powered, they're also doing some stuff with modulation, and so they're harder to detect than traditional continuous wave police radar guns, and so you do get shorter range. And because some of the modulation schemes, maybe the radar detectors don't always have a good way of telling the difference, we do sometimes see falses with photo radar and blind spot radar if a detector is struggling to tell the difference. And so detectors need to have the sensitivity and the filtering capability and the signal analysis to really tell the difference between these different types of signals. Now, they all traditionally operate on K-band, uh, but we're actually starting to see some photo radar, again, starting first overseas, that operates on uh, 77 gigahertz or in W-band. Now, for the most part, anything on W-band, it's a lot of blind spot radar. You've probably noticed there's a lot of cars that have the blind spot radar that doesn't trigger a radar detector, and that's for various reasons. Sometimes it's because they operate at 77 gigahertz, not at 24, and our detectors are, well, not designed to operate at 77 gigahertz. That said, uh, if we're starting to see some police radar guns, especially for some of this photo radar enforcement operating at 77 gigahertz, then, well, 
our radar detectors would need to be physically updated to have new hardware to support detection at 77 gigahertz, just like they had to be updated when police started switching from K-band to K-A-band, and well, we needed to redesign the detectors there as well. Additionally, when it comes to automated speed enforcement, there's some laser-based systems. It's basically like a police laser gun hooked up to a camera, and same idea, measures the speed of vehicle. If it detects it speeding, then, well, takes a picture, and then mails the person a ticket based on their license plate. A lot of these will have something like a TrueSpeed S in a box, or a Dragon base camera, or even something like the Paula scan. And some of the Paula scans, for example, they also started overseas, then they've started showing up in different states, and here in Washington State, we've actually just started getting some in use on the highway, not in the city, but on the highway in like different construction zones. And against the Paula scan, just like any of the other laser-based systems, well, you would need a laser jammer in order to defend against that, and a lot of the laser jammers actually support the Paula scan too. Uh, now, something else, there's some uh, speed enforcement systems that don't use radar or laser. Again, a lot of the stuff started overseas, but we're starting to see some of it even here in Washington State. Uh, for example, some of the point-to-point -point camera systems. And basically the idea is there's gonna be not just one camera, but two. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna take a picture of the car when it enters kind of the speed corridor, then that car is gonna drive through the corridor, and then at the end they take a second picture, capturing the vehicle and the license plate, and then just do a basic calculation with how long it took for them to travel through the corridor, and then they can calculate the average speed uh, through that area. And if they're speeding, well, they've got the pictures, the license plates, etc., and they can mail the person a ticket. Now, Stinger actually has a feature designed specifically to help against these point-to-point -point cameras. It's called their Section Alert feature. Uh, and it's basically like a modified version of a fixed, maybe photo radar system or speed camera system. But instead of just having one camera, because there's two cameras in a corridor, it'll let you know kind of like when you enter that corridor, uh, what your average speed is throughout the corridor, letting you know if you're maybe like above the speed and you're gonna get a ticket or something. And then it also lets you know once you finally exited the corridor here as well. And that's something that could be added to our different radar detectors as well, if needed, just via a software update. And I think a lot of this stuff, not everything, but a lot of these issues could be addressed in software. Some things like the photo radar detection may take some hardware updates, but a lot of the stuff, especially some of the bugs that I discussed in the beginning, it's really fundamentally just software stuff. And speaking of software, one thing that would be pretty low-hanging fruit is supporting an open API. It's what Valentine did years ago, and it's been awesome for them to have third-party developers building apps for their detectors. And I would love to see other companies doing the exact same thing and letting, well, third-party developers develop free products for them and help make their products better. Now, all the stuff that I'm discussing here, it's no secret by any means. I mean, I've discussed this for many years throughout different videos. I even did a compilation video years ago describing what I would envision as like my best radar detector, my ultimate radar detector, you know? And I also discussed this stuff privately with different manufacturers as well. And I would love to see somebody build it. I don't care who, I don't care what brand is slapped on the box. I just wanna see somebody build like an amazing detector that checks all these boxes, you know? Maybe easier said than done. We can speculate for a variety of reasons of why this isn't being done, but obviously it would be nice if somebody were to build that. Now, in the last video, a lot of you guys actually suggested, well, hey, Vortex, why don't you do it? You do a lot about radar detectors. You have an idea as far as what would work well and what doesn't. Why don't you build a radar detector? And in fact, over the years, I've actually had multiple offers from a couple different radar detector companies who would want to partner with me, um, who want to have like a Vortex branded version of their radar detector. Uh, and I've thought about it, but I always decline. And the reason is I really wanna maintain my position as being like the objective third-party tester and reviewer. If I were to partner with any one company, even if I was completely still able to maintain my objectivity and be like, here's the pros and cons of my detector and everything else, I could still see my trust and credibility going down and I would totally understand anybody who's like, well, I can't trust you anymore because you're supporting brand X. You're actually working for them now and I, I totally get that and I think kind of my strength is like taking a look at everything and just kind of going over the pros and cons and helping you make an informed decision and I think that would be tough to do if I was to represent any brand or even start my own now there's pros and cons maybe at some point it's just like screw it just go build your own thing like we trust you just go build it you know and I, I get that but like I don't think that's really my forte that's not really how I would want to approach it and you know, all the ideas that I have, again, I share them here in videos. I've done so many times over the years. It's not like any of this stuff is a secret. And there's gotta be reasons why companies are not doing this stuff. You know, if it was just like, snap your fingers and it's done, of, of course they would do it. You know, have awesome features and everything works great and performance is sensational and the false alert filtering is perfect, but easier said than done. It is still weird to see some of the basics not being handled, but 
there's got to be reasons for that stuff, you know? Now, one of the suggestions that many of you brought up is, well, maybe the radar detector market just isn't that big, you know? There's not enough money, not enough uh, customers coming in for these uh, companies to actually invest in the R&D to make all this stuff happen. And I could definitely see an element of truth to that. Uh, the radar detector companies, for example, they are really small, a lot smaller than most people think. There's really only a handful of engineers who are even building these things in the first place. And despite my complaints and concerns, I'm actually really grateful to them because without the people building the stuff, we would have no detectors to keep us protected in the first place. And so I'm still actually very grateful to these companies, even though I also have my frustrations with them. Now that said, I do find that some things like dash cams, there's way more people that are interested in dash cams than there are in radar detectors, which I think it kind of makes its intuitive sense, you know? Plus, you don't have a lot of the same objections that you do with radar detectors. You know, people hear about radar detectors and they're like, oh yeah, those things don't work, they're a scam, you know, or they false too much, which again, for many times can actually be true. You've got people who say, oh, radar detectors, those must be illegal, right? Uh, and then of course, maybe one of the biggest ones is people like, well, why don't you just do the speed limit? You know, like speeding is dangerous, it's a horrible idea. And that's, I think, one of the most common knee-jerk reactions, which I think is totally understandable especially if you don't take the time to do a little bit of critical thinking and consider the fact that the world isn't actually black and white. Like it requires a little bit of nuance here to this discussion. And so while I definitely find that perspective to be understandable, there's a lot more to it than that. Now, if a lot of the radar detector companies were bigger and there was a much wider audience of people buying these things and well, funneling money into the companies so that they could invest in the R&D and stuff, maybe we would see more innovation and development, you know? Not to the level of something we would see out of companies like Apple or Google or Samsung, like these massive companies producing, you know, incredible phones and all this tech and stuff. There's not gonna be that level of innovation and development, but still maybe if the companies were able to get more money, they could do more development. So maybe it is a size thing, both on the radar detector company side and on just the market size as well. A number of you have also mentioned how companies a lot of times will prioritize profit over performance, maybe focusing more on marketing or something. And again, I'm not the CEO of a big company with a bunch of employees that I'm responsible for or shareholders or anything, but I can understand companies who, well, they need to make a profit, right? They have to pay their employees. They have to make sure that they're growing and all that kind of stuff. Additionally, we see sometimes companies will uh, get partnered with venture capital firms, right? It's a way to get money and expertise and all that kind of stuff, but I've never really seen that to pan out long-term. Like Escort has done that. Uniden actually did it as well back in 2022. And Again, I've never seen that pan out long-term where I'm really impressed with what happens to the company. A lot of times it can wind up with the company getting sliced and diced, or they're just trying to like quickly boost profits and then flip the company for a profit or something. I don't really see like the long-term uh, innovation and development there. I would love to be proven wrong, but that's just not like historically what I've seen. A lot of you have also mentioned Waze, and that could be a reason why somebody would not pick up a radar detector, especially if they think that Waze is like a substitute for a radar detector. Uh, which it's not. I think Waze is fantastic. I use it on basically every drive, but I think it's actually a complement to a radar detector. I've done a whole video comparing Waze versus radar detectors. In short, they each have their pros and cons. They kind of fill in the gaps that the other ones don't offer. I actually think Waze does a better job of protecting you against laser than it does against radar because police using laser guns, well, they have to be stationary. Um, and so if they're set up with a speed trap, they can get marked on Waze or something versus if an officer is driving around with uh, radar, there's no way to mark them there on Waze, you know? So you kind of need like both of them. They each have their pros and cons. And so either way here, as far as radar detectors themselves, well, what's next? Well, I'm hoping that companies will at some point just step up their game and be like, hey guys, let's let's do this. You know, let's, let's nail the basics. Let's make sure all the key stuff is just working well. I don't think that's too much to ask for. I don't think that's unreasonable or anything, but like just nail the basics, you know? And then as far as my role here, I've already shared my thoughts here, both publicly and privately, many times. And at this point, it's up to the companies themselves to do whatever they're gonna do. They can listen to me, they can listen to you, they can listen to us or other customers who call in. They've got their own ideas as far as what they want, and they're gonna listen to like all of that stuff and then ultimately decide what's best for them, what approaches make sense, where can they actually invest the R&D, do they have the funding and the engineering talent and expertise, is that reasonable to do? Will it make enough of a difference? Will it actually help to be profitable to their bottom line if they do that? Like they have a lot of stuff to consider beyond just, well, I don't know, people on the internet said they want stuff and okay, I guess let's do it. You know, like I understand there's more to it than that, but either way, it's like, I've said my piece, companies are gonna do whatever they're gonna do and it's not my responsibility to ensure that they're doing something or not. You know, like again, I'm just the person here who's like, I'm testing and comparing and reviewing this stuff. I'll share my thoughts, good and bad. And then the companies themselves are gonna do whatever they're gonna do or not.
I also don't have any interest in starting my own radar detector company because I like being kind of like the third party objective tester type person. I think that's a better fit for me. And so like, if I'm not as excited for now about radar detectors, if there's a bit of a slump right now with development or new product releases or something, it's like, I kind of want to just focus on the stuff that makes me happy, you know, that I'm enjoying, that I'm honestly having fun doing. And if that means maybe like focusing more on dash cams or on Bitcoin stuff or just whatever other passions I've got, that's cool too, you know? Like, this has been my core thing. I've been doing this for about 13 years now. Like, this has been my core thing for a while, but if temporarily or whatever, like, we're not seeing the level of innovation that I would like to see, I don't want to just be this like, ah, I can do this, you know? And just be like the old man yelling, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, do what I say. I'm just like, I've said my piece. Companies are gonna do whatever they're gonna do. And at this point, I just want to focus on stuff that makes me happy, that I'm enjoying, you know? Life is short. Again, don't get me wrong, I love radar detectors. I'm super passionate about that. There's a reason why I've dedicated a significant chunk of my life to this. You know, it is very important to me. It is very special. And despite my complaints, they're coming out of my passion, you know? Like, there's a reason that I'm doing this. So anyways, I'm still hopeful for the best. I'm frustrated, but I am still hopeful that we're going to continue to see more innovation and development. So anyways, that's it for now. I got a lot more videos that I'm continuing to work on. And so if you've taken the time to listen to this whole thing, thank you. Thank you. I can tell if you've done so, you're also somebody who's equally passionate uh, about this stuff as well. And I'm really glad that you guys are hanging out here uh, as we're just chatting about radar detectors and testing and learning along the way. So thank you, as always. I hope you're doing great. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.